In this video, I'll show you how to use the Hangfire library for scheduling background jobs. We're going to use it to implement the Outbox pattern where Hangfire will schedule a recurring job to process the Outbox messages. I want to keep the focus on this video on using the Hangfire library, so I already prepared a background job for processing Outbox messages. You don't need to do anything special to define a background job. It can be just a simple class with a public method that you're going to call from your scheduled job. In this case, the process outbox messages job is going to inject some dependencies. The main logic will be inside of the process async method where we are going to open a database connection, use it to begin a transaction, and then we are going to fetch a list of outbox messages. If we don't have any messages, we complete the background job. And if we do have messages, we're going to process them one by one inside of a for each loop. We start by deserializing the message content, which is a JSON string, into a domain event object, which I'm then going to publish using mediator. If we get an exception, we're going to store that into a variable. And lastly, we're going to update the outbox message in the database. When we're done with the for each loop, we're going to commit the transaction. I also have some helper methods here that are going to use Dapper to read the outbox messages that we need to process from the database and one more method that's going to update the outbox message in the database once we are done processing it. As for how the outbox messages end up in the database, we have the insert outbox messages interceptor. It's an EF core interceptor that's going to look at the change tracker for any entries implementing the entity base class. Then we're just going to extract the domain events, convert them into outbox messages and store that as part of a single atomic transaction together with any other updates to the database. And now let's see how we're going to introduce Hangfire to our solution. So we have to start by installing some NuGet packages and I'm going to look for Hangfire. I'm going to install the Hangfire ASP.NET Core library. So I'm going to add the latest version and I'm going to use Postgres as my database to persist the background job information. So I'm going to install the Hangfire PostgreSQL library as well. With these two libraries in place, let's see what we need to configure with dependency injection. I'm going to define a helper method that's going to be called add background jobs. It doesn't exist yet, but it's going to take in the service collection to add some services to dependency injection. And it's going to need the I configuration instance to pull some values from our application settings. And now I'm going to copy this signature to make it easier on me to define this method. And I'm just going to rename it to add background jobs. So let me configure Hangfire with dependency injection. I'm going to call add Hangfire and I'm going to pass in a delegate to apply some configuration. What we want to do is to tell Hangfire to use PostgreSQL as the storage for our scheduled tasks. And this is where you can pass in your connection string. So I'm going to say options, use MPG SQL connection, and I'm going to use my configuration instance to get the connection string called database. So this will wire up the required services. I'm also going to add the Hangfire server, which is going to configure my application to act as a Hangfire server. And I'm going to update the background job server options. I want to set the schedule polling interval to a time span of one second. And this will tell the server to check the schedule every one second, which will allow me to run my jobs more frequently. By default, the smallest unit supported by Hangfire is running the background job every one minute. However, we're going to be updating this to run the job every 5, 10 or 15 seconds. And updating the schedule polling interval is an important step to make this function. I'm also going to register my background job as a scoped service. So I'll use the I process outbox messages job interface and I'm going to specify the implementation as the implementing scoped service. Hangfire also comes with a built-in monitoring dashboard and I'm going to configure this when I'm running in a development environment. So let me add the code for that. We're going to call use Hangfire dashboard and this is going to expose the dashboard on the slash Hangfire endpoint. I'm also going to supply some dashboard options by setting the dark mode to false and I'm going to set the authorization filters collection to an empty collection. When you run the dashboard on localhost, you should be able to access it without any authentication. However, I was having some trouble doing this. I suspect this is because I'm running in Docker Compose and my Hangfire server is in a Docker container. So it probably treats the Docker network as localhost while treating the actual localhost network as an external network. So I just cleaned up the filters and this worked fine in development. 
So this is a small hack I had to put in place. Now, what I want to do is to configure my background job. I'm going to add an extension method for that and it's going to be an extension on my web application type. I'm going to call it the background job extensions. This is going to be a static class and I'm going to add a static method inside. Let's call this method use background jobs. It's going to be an extension on the web application type. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can access my application services. The service that I want to resolve for registering the background jobs is the recurring job manager. But you can also resolve the I background job client, which is the default way how you would schedule a background job. So you just call the schedule method and this starts a background job with Hangfire and then you can implement the body of your background job. And for example, we can just say hello inside of a console and this would start the background job and I can specify a delay of zero to start the job immediately. However, what I want to do is to create a recurring job and for this, I need the iRecurringJob manager. Then I'm going to call the add or update method and I need to provide some descriptive name that's going to be my recurring job ID. I'm going to call this the Outbox Processor. And what I really enjoy about how Hangfire does this is that I can specify a generic argument here, which can be my actual background job implementation. However, I can also specify the interface. So for example, I can pass in the iProcess Outbox Messages job, and this will be resolved from dependency injection. And then inside of my job, I can access the job instance and you will see that this is my interface type while I configured it to resolve our actual background job implementation which is the process outbox messages job class. So now I can use this interface to call the process async method and this also supports passing in a cancellation token although I didn't specify one but just noting that you can do that and then you need to specify your cron schedule which configures how often you want to run your background job Let's say I want to execute it every 15 seconds. This will be the cron schedule that I would specify. A better alternative would be to set this value from my application settings. So I'm going to pull the cron schedule using the I configuration object. And let's go and set this value in our application settings. You can see I already prepared this value ahead of time. And it's the same cron expression that I just showed you earlier. So right now it's configured to run every 15 seconds. But if I want to run it every five seconds, this is the update I would need to make to the cron schedule. So let's revert to running every 15 seconds and go back to our use background jobs method. This is how you can configure a recurring job with Hangfire that's going to run using a specific cron schedule. Now I'm going to call this method from my program file by saying app use background jobs. And now my recurring job is configured with the Hangfire server. So I think we are ready now to start the application and I want to show you a few more things that you get with Hangfire. If I open up Docker Desktop and go into the logs for my web API, which is also acting as my Hangfire server, you can see that we will start getting some logs from the job processing the Outbox messages table. If I take a look at the other logs, you will see that Hangfire is applying some configuration. And if I open up the database, you will see that now there is a Hangfire schema inside of my database. And this contains information about the jobs that I'm executing. For example, here are all of the jobs that have executed so far. You can see their state, if they have succeeded or not, when they were created and when they completed. So Hangfire offers a pretty robust scheduling system. I showed you how to implement a recurring job, but you can just as easily implement a scheduled job that runs once every day, for example, or once every few days, which obviously depends on your requirements. If I navigate to the Hangfire route on my API, I will be greeted by the Hangfire dashboard. Here you can see a real-time graph of the background jobs that you have running. Right now, there's only one recurring job running every five seconds. If I go into the Jobs tab, you can see if you have any jobs scheduled or not. Hangfire will also retry scheduled jobs, and you can see that information in the Retries tab. And in the Recurring Jobs tab, you can see any recurring jobs that we have configured, which is our single Outbox Processor job. You can also see the cron schedule here and what will be the actual class that's going to execute your job. Now, if I go back to jobs and succeeded, you can see a list of the succeeded runs of my background 
job. It also tells me how long it took for each background job instance to run. Now if we go to our background job for a moment, I wanted to discuss a common limitation of implementing the Outbox processor yourself. And this problem will be concurrent executions of the background job. So if it takes longer for your background job to complete, then the configured schedule for executing the next job, you may end up with multiple instances of your background job. And I want to show you that this is the case by adding a delay to my for each loop by calling task delay. And let's say I want to delay this for 30 seconds. So I'm going to say await task delay time span from seconds and specify 30 seconds. Because my background job is configured to run every 15 seconds, what's going to happen when we start processing an outbox message is we're going to delay the execution for 30 seconds, which is going to start another background job that's going to pick up the same outbox message. Now a really cool way how you can solve this with Postgres is by using locks. And you can do that by adding the for update statement so this is the select for update query. And what this is going to do is acquire a row level lock for any rows that we read for this query. So if there are other transactions trying to read those same rows, they are going to block until we release the lock. So let me show you how this works when we start our background processing. I'm also going to add a log so that we know that we are delayed inside of our for each loop. So let's add a simple log statement delaying. And then I'm going to specify what is the message ID that we are delaying on. I'm going to use the outbox message object to grab the ID value. And of course, we need to write this log statement before we start the delay. So now let's start our Hangfire server. And you can see our background job is running every 15 or so seconds. Now what I'm going to do is to send a post request to my API to create a new user, which will trigger the publishing of a domain event, and it will be stored as an outbox message. So I'm going to send this request and we will get back the user ID. If I open up the logs again, you can see that we started processing the outbox messages and we are delaying on this specific outbox message ID. This is going to wait for 30 seconds and you can see that another background job has started but it didn't start processing the message. This is because this background job instance is now blocked because we use the select for update statement and is going to be waiting until we complete the processing. And notice what happens now. We get a third concurrent instance of the background job, which is this log here, and then we get a completed processing outbox messages. This is only written after we have successfully processed an outbox messages, which is actually our initial background job. And then you can see the logs from the remaining background jobs, which state that they completed and there were no messages to process, which means that our select for update statement allows us to process the outbox messages in a concurrent environment, and it also prevents processing the same outbox message twice. However, the problem with this is that we are preventing the scaling of our solution. So adding more background jobs to process the outbox messages table is only going to cause them to block on the rows that we locked with the select for update statement, which effectively reduces our concurrency to one. However, what we can do is use the select for update statement and specify skip locked. And this is going to tell the other background jobs that are running concurrently to skip the locked rows which means that it should select the other rows that we need to process based on this condition and it's going to lock those rows. Now let me show you what our execution looks like with the select for update and the skip lock statement. So our Hangfire server is running and our background job is executing every 15 seconds. Now I'm going to send a post request from Postman which is going to add an outbox message. Now if I check out the logs, you can see we have a background job that picked up this message and now it's delaying for 30 seconds. And now when 15 seconds pass, you will see another background job that's starting. However, it's going to instantly complete because there are no messages to process. And what's going on is it's going to skip the locked rows and find that there are no other rows to process. So this is a simple way how you can horizontally scale your outbox processors while still making sure that you are not processing the same outbox message twice. And if you want to learn how to implement the transactional outbox pattern from scratch, then you should watch this video next. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons and until next time, stay awesome.